Bonjour, today on Travelling Fabulously, it's my Paris arrondissement guide to the second. And how come everybody wants to crash, boom and bang when I'm talking to you? I don't know. Anyway, today we're going to explore the second arrondissement of Paris. You know what I say, whatever you do, do it fabulously. So why don't you come and join me on this week's episode of Travelling Fabulously. Bonjour, today I'm out the front of Bourse, which is situated in the second arrondissement. It used to be the stock exchange of Paris, but now it's just a convention centre. Well, not just a convention centre if you have to be in Paris. It's like, you know, a convention centre where they hold things for Fashion Week. I mean, how cool is that? It's also Men's Fashion Week here at Bourse, so that's why I've worn my favourite flanny. By the way, to those of you who don't know, that aren't from Australia, a flanny is a flannelette shirt. Hmm, I know. When's Jean-Paul Gaultier going to bring flannel back? That's what I want to know. If he wants, I could be just like Justin Timberlake and bring sexy back in the flannel. The second arrondissement in Paris is known as the Financial District. It's home to many French banking headquarters. So it's just right where you want to put your money, really. <laughs> but it's also one of Paris's foodie hotspots. Starting with Japanese Wagyu beef restaurant Oya. The owner's chef's family actually have a Wagyu farm in Japan where they get their beef from for the restaurant. They also do amazing desserts made right in front of you. Canada Champagne offers a great value menu at lunchtime as well as a fabulous one for dinner where you can get two courses and a glass of champagne with your meal. I love their foie gras terrine, or their confit duck, or even their duck breast. You've got to love a good breast. Well, if you're in Australia, you just got to love a duck. Bone Shaker, you can get delicious donuts. Un jus à parasol offers wonderful truffles in every dish and is a favourite of mine in Paris and a must for any truffle lover out there. You've got great foodie streets like Rue Tic Tonk, where you can get a cheap Portuguese dinner with a fiery African hot sauce at Pal. You can check out the Whiskey Bar at Golden Promise or the Saki at La Maison Saki, ceviche and cocktails at Picaflo, or Le Denicheur for some natural wines. And then we have the wonderful Rue Montecoy. <laughs> is one of Paris's most popular foodie streets, filled with people, locals and tourists alike, who come to eat, drink and be merry at places like Le Compass Bistro, who do, among other things, a wonderful croque monsieur, or madame if you'd like. Stoho Bakery, which is supposedly the oldest patisserie in Paris and a Queen's favourite. Not me. Like, it's the actual Queen's favourite, apparently. Fabulous food and drinking on Rue saint Sever. Rue saint Sever offers a range of cheap eats like Joanna's Fish and Chips or a glass of wine at Red Bar. You can even try some Thai at Monsieur K or a cocktail at Jeffrey's. Possibly one of the most famed foodie streets in Paris, Rue de Nil, home of Terrasse de Avenue Bakery, Boucherie, Poissonnerie, Epicerie, Primeur, and Cremerie. Le Arbre à Café, and of course, Frenchie. Frenchie Wine Bar and Frenchie to Go, which has been renovated recently and has new hours and delicious fried chicken. We all know I love the passageways in Paris and the second has many of them, like Passage Joffrey, Passage Panorama, Passage Chasseur, Galleries Vivienne and Passage de Grand Coeur. 
If you're a coin collector, you have to head over to Rue Vivienne. It's a coin collector's dream. You probably spend a bit of money here. It's an oxymoron. Or just a moron. If you're a fan of the fab TV series The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, then you have to check out the street scenario around Place de Petit Pears. Pears, Pears, Petit Pears, Small Fathers, I don't know. I'll work it out. I'll look it up on the internet and get back to you. Better than the internet, I rang my husband, and yep, I was correct the first time. Plus to Petty Pear. He's always right. Shh, don't tell him that. Louis Jean Chans Peur housed the bedchamber and grand staircase of what is now one of the best surviving examples of medieval architecture in Paris. You can go up there any Wednesday through to Sunday from 1.30 onwards. Just to check it out. Patrick Blanc created the Oasis de Brook in 2013 and has over 7,500 plants on it. It's a park on a wall, basically. Passage Claire, which is actually the longest passageway in Paris. Here in a second. Passage Claire, or Cairo, as it is known in English, is a textile lover's dream. In fact, the deuxième, as they like to call it here in France, that's the French for second arrondissement, is also known as the textile neighbourhood. If you're a fabric lover, you can explore all around Sentier and second arrondissement for great fabrics and clothes. De Degouk, I should say that again, Rue de Degouk, Rue de Deg is officially the smallest street in Paris and it's located in the second. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Travelling Fabulously, the Paris Arrondissement Guide to the Second Arrondissement. If you liked it, press the like button. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to Fabulousness by hitting the subscribe button just down below. Share me around with your friends. I love to be shared around, don't you? And remember, as I say, whatever you do, do it fabulously.